sure I'm all here, but <laughs> I know you're all here and there. <laughs> so, how do we do this? Here's the beginning point. This is it. The beginning point of spiritual discernment is, is the decision not to judge by appearance. Say it with me. I decide not to judge by appearance. One more time. I decide not to judge by appearance. Say it and claim it, brothers and sisters. Amen. The very moment, the very moment that you make the decision, this decision, not to judge by appearance, you begin to move within you the realization of the sole faculty of spiritual discernment that is in every one of us. Something changes. It is profound. You can hear these words, you can walk out those doors a little later this morning and go, yeah, okay, not judged by, by outer appearance. <clears throat> yeah, I've heard that before, I've heard it before. The moment you decide that this is how you're going to live, something miraculous changes. Everything will change in your life. And if you think that I have completed it, and I'm doing it, and I always do it, you would be wrong. I'm working on it. I am working on it. Consciously. And I know you are. It's why you're here. The moment you decide not to judge by outer appearance. That's the beginning of the entire spiritual life. You make an agreement within yourself that what you can hear, see, touch, taste, and smell of another person, another situation, is not your truth. You come to an agreement in yourself that the use of your five physical senses will not lead you to the truth. And so you say, you say, no, no, Divine Father. No, no, Divine Mother. No, no, God. No, no, Spirit. Reveal to me. Reveal to me. Not through my senses. Not through my mental judgment. Reveal to me truth as it really is. And how do you know when something really is? You ever think about that? Now I hear you say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to suspend my judgment. I'm going to wait on God, wait on spirit to reveal the truth to me. So how do I know? How can I be sure that when I think I've heard the truth that it is? Bless you. It's really simple. I think you are at peace. You're at peace. No matter what the facts in your life are, no matter what is going on, when you've gone inside and you've heard the truth of spirit, you're at peace with yourself and with the world as it is, not changed as it is. This is the path of the mystic. It's your path. Right now. Say this with me. I judge not by appearance. I judge not by appearance. I wait on God to reveal the truth. I wait on God to reveal the truth. See, there's something more. We talk a lot about happiness. I love being happy. Who, who likes being happy? And uh, anybody that doesn't love being happy, raise your hands. Good. No spiritual counseling immediately after church. <laughs> emergency. Just like make an emergency brain surgery, just an emergency session. I like being happy. And 
Here's my belief. You don't need to give up your happiness to be on a spiritual path. You don't need to give up your happiness to be a mystic. You don't need to do that. And there is something that we want more than happiness. And that's peace. That's peace. We want it even more than happiness. Because it's out of peace that we realize love. It's out of peace that we feel harmony. It's out of peace that we feel good and healthy, regardless of our physical condition. It comes through peace. It is the peace that the Apostle Paul wrote of, the peace that surpasses all understanding. Why does it surpass all understanding? I'm pretty bright, you're thinking to yourself. I've read a lot. I've been to a lot of places. I'm, I am, you know, I live awake. My eyes are open. I know your eyes are open. <laughs> so why, why can't I, I mean, don't tell me, don't insult me, don't tell me I can't understand something. <coughs> You ever feel that way? When somebody says, somebody says to you, no, no, I'm sorry, you, you, you wouldn't understand. <laughs> you know, mainly, you're giving them a spiritual... <laughs> Was that on camera? I, I like it. <laughs> Just want to be sure that it's on YouTube. <laughs> it is a piece that surpasses your understanding. Why? Because... Your human mind, my human mind, cannot comprehend God. Who here says they can comprehend the fullness of God? Good. Another session I don't have to <laughs> And not only can we not comprehend God, we can't really comprehend the peace of God. It is beyond our human comprehension. You see, God, as I understand God, the God that's eternal, the God that is omnipresent, the God of, om of omniscience, that God, that God doesn't know, doesn't smile with the smile of happiness or unhappiness. Happiness, and I said, you don't have, I don't believe you have to give it up. Happiness is a human emotion. It's a condition of our human experience. God's not happy or unhappy. God is peace. Peace is an attribute of God. In fact, peace is the overwhelming aspect of God. Because as I said earlier, everything comes out of peace. Love, harmony, respect. Brotherhood, sisterhood, community, it all comes out of peace. That's what we want more than anything. It's peace. See, the mistake that many of us make, and a mistake that I have made and time to time still make, more often than I'd like to admit, is that I attempt to apply spiritual principle and spiritual discernment through my physical human senses. And it doesn't work. And there's nothing wrong with your physical senses. <coughs> nothing wrong. I mean, the fact that you cannot spiritually discern through your physical senses doesn't make them wrong or malfunctioning. They were evolved for that purpose. They were evolved so you could see, hear, taste, touch, smell. But they were not evolved alone alone to spiritually, spiritually discern they were not evolved to see the kingdom of heaven. That takes another power. It's a power that you have. It's the power of spiritual discernment. I didn't say human spiritual discernment. I said the power of spiritual discernment, and that is a gift of spirit. And it's there for you and every one of us has. Joe Goldsmith is crystal clear on this. Listen to these words. I'm speaking.
speaking of the power of spiritual discernment. <clears throat> On this point, this power hinges the entire spiritual life. And on this point hinges spiritual healing. With the five physical senses, that is, with the human mind, we would be more than foolish if we stated that there is no sin, disease, or death in the world, or if we were to say there is no lack, limitation, or stupidity. I, 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 just, I laughed out loud at it. Or stupidity. See, this is why when we in unity and religious science and Christian science and other life traditions, when we walk around and we say, there is no lack, there is no limitation, there is no death, people look at us like we're funny. And it will always sound and look funny. Always. As long as we're hearing with, with human ears alone and seeing with spiritual eyes alone. Judging the physical world to the five physical human senses is nonsensical when you want to see the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. We don't have to give up the physical senses, but we must add to it. We must layer over it. We must transcend it with spiritual sight and spiritual understanding. He goes on to say, once spiritual discernment has been attained, even, take hope, boys and girls, even in a small measure, did you hear that? Even in a small measure. That means you just open the door a crack. We begin to perceive God's creation right where mortality appears to be. That's another word for death, lack, limitation. And this constitutes the healing consciousness. The healing consciousness is your consciousness. See, as humans, humans are aware of. Spirit is consciousness. Our awareness sits within the consciousness of spirit. And the healing consciousness is one that is at peace. That is what it means to be healed. To be at peace. Everything flows from that. <clears throat> so we come to the question of how do we how do we consciously increase our awareness of our power of spiritual discernment? And here's an exercise that you can begin now. You get to do this throughout your waking hours, every hour of every day. And you can even carry it over into your sleeping. Every time you think something, say something, or dream something is good, say, once again, no, no, God. No, no, Spirit. Reveal it to me as it really is. Reveal it to me as it really is. We withdraw the label of good. Now, that may feel difficult. That may not even feel like something you want to do. It is the teaching. It is the teaching. Because whenever, whenever we see something or say something is good, no matter how good you are, unspokenly, there will be a bad. If there's good, there's bad. You can't have good without bad. Because good and bad are in the physical world of duality. And spiritual sight is in the realm of God where there is no duality. There is no good. There is no bad. There is no up. There is no down. There is no right. There is no wrong. 